at the game here. So here we are dealing with uh, this is a basic schematic, basic motor control schematic. You've got a stop button right here. I've got a start button right here. I've got a relay coil right here. Now, a relay coil is the actual thing that pulls it in, and I'll show you what that means in a second here. So this is the actual electromagnet. Now, with this relay, it also has sets of contacts associated with it. So I have a set of normally open contacts here, a set of normally open contacts here, and a set of normally closed contacts here. So the way this circuit works is right now, if there's control power coming in on the top, I got power coming through, goes through the stop button, gets to the start, can't make the jump, goes to the normally open contact, can't make the jump. I've also got current going down here, can't make the jump to the green light. However, it can go through the normally closed contact, so my red light will be on. So this is a circuit I actually had my class wire up on Friday. So it's kind of, they get all excited about it. I get excited about it still, and I've been teaching this for almost 10 years now. So what happens now is when I go to hit the button, I push down this button here, my start button, which will energize this coil, which is that electromagnet. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. When that energizes, all the contacts that are physically attached to this guy are going to do what they're supposed to. Normally open is going to close. So what will happen here is I push that button down, that energizes, these close, and now my current can go through there and keep this guy held in. Because when I let go of the push button, it pops back up. So if I didn't have this set of contacts here, this would energize only as long as I press this down. Now that I have this set of contacts, I press it down, energizes, pulls in, let it up. I still have a path that my current can go through and energize my relay. Same thing down here. This set of contacts will be physically attached to this, so it'll close and my green light will go on. This is normally closed, which means when this energizes, these open and my red light turns off. And that is as basic a circuit as you can get as far as a relay is concerned. And you know what? Motor control circuits work the same way, except the only difference is you've got a coil, an M coil we call it, but you also have a set of overloads. And maybe if you guys want, I can probably throw together a little mini lesson on how a motor contactor, or not a motor contactor, a motor starter works. And then I'll bring a, a demo in and I'll show you guys how that all plays out. So that is my basic relay circuit. Now, when I talk about a relay, this is what's on the inside. So let me just pop this guy out here. So you can see here that I've got a coil. That is my electromagnet. And inside here, you can't really see inside, but I've got a set of contacts in there as well. When I look at this here, this is my coil. I'd have two wires coming here, like an A1 and an A2. I energize this coil here, which in turn turns this whole core into an electromagnet. Can we dig it? So that's what's happening with this. So this becomes magnetized when I bring power to it. This is your armature. So what it is, is some ferrous material, magnetic material, or material that would like to become magnetic, and it's going to pull up because it's attracted to the electromagnet here. Okay, so that's how the, the coil part works. Now up here is where our contacts work. And this here would be a set of normally closed contacts. I've got contact here, a contact here, and it goes through contact, contact. So my power is always going through here. Boop. Up top here, I have normally open contacts because I've got no place to go and the other side is waiting to get some power as well. So we're going to energize this in a second here. So again, this becomes magnetized. This armature pulls up. This whole assembly pushes up. So what's going to happen is this side is going to break and this side is going to make. Let me show you what I mean. Oop. There we go. This right here. So I've got this energized. See how this pulled up the armature. The whole assembly moved up, and here where it was once normally closed is now open, and which was once normally open is now closed. That's how all your relays work, except for solid state relays. But all your electromechanical relays, they all work on the same principle. Your motor starters, they work on the same principle. You've got a core here, you've got an armature, you've got a set of contacts. Now, I only have two sets of contacts here. You can have way more, which is the whole purpose of this 8-pin and 11-pin relay, which we'll get into in a second. Okay? So that's how that's happened. Now for the 8-pin and 11-pin relay, let me just call this up here. Let me go back to, make sure I've got the sharing of the screen happening. One second here. Just download, there we go. I have my 8-pin relay here. 
So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if you look at it right here, I got my eight pins. It's a circular thing, but I have all these connection points along here. All those are are different points here. Now, if I look at this guy, if you look close, there's they're all numbered. Two and seven. So this two here and this seven here, that is my coil. So that's the power that energizes my coil. So that's important. We need to bring power there to have the magnet pull in. When I have a set of two sets of contacts here, sorry, not when I, I do have two sets of contacts here. I've got one set, this number one, we call that a common because power is coming in here. Now power can either go from one to four, which would be normally closed, or one to three, which is normally open. So I have two sets of contacts here and one common. Now the thing is, and the, the one that I showed you, let me just back up the truck here. This guy is that re, the, the point there. I've got normally open, sorry, let me back it up one more. Normally open set of contacts, normally closed set of contacts. Normally open set of contacts, right there. Normally closed set of contacts, right there. I might require more contacts. That's where the eight pin is handy. I've got another set of contacts down here. I've got my eight, which is my common, and then my eight to six would be my normally open, and eight to five is normally closed, which makes it useful. Now, if you need even more contacts, that is where the 11 pin relay comes in. Boom. All it is, is just another set of contacts down here. So it gives you three full sets of contacts. The difference is the wiring's a little bit different from the coil. Your two and your 10 is now your coil. And then you just go one to four is normally closed. One to three is normally open. 11 to eight is normally closed. 11 to nine is normally open. Six to five is normally closed. Six to seven is normally open. Three sets of contacts. And then beyond that, you can probably get even higher. I don't think I've ever used anything more than three sets of contacts but it's something you might want to consider, I guess, if you're looking into it. Now, how do I know all this? Where did I get all these sets of contacts from? On the relay itself, there is a drawing or draw ring. And the problem with the drawing sometimes is it gets rubbed off or you can't read it that well, or if, as you get older, you're having to hold it further and further apart. But you can see all that in there. All I did was take that and then translate it onto there. So everything you need is on the relay itself. Also, you need to be careful that you're using the right coil voltage. Not all coils can take every single voltage. You need to make sure that if you have a 120 volt control circuit, that your coil is rated for 120 volts. If it's rated for 240, it's not going to pick up. If it's rated for 24, you're going to blow it up. So that's something to consider as well.